Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at class Scyphozoa. It's also pronounced Scyphozoa. I've actually heard it both ways. I've done a whole bunch of searching and I'm going to stick with Scyphozoa on this one. So looking at class Scyphozoa, it is one of the four major classes that we see in phylum Cnidaria. So when we take all the Cnidarians out there, we can divide them into four major groups. Class Scyphozoa, class Hydrozoa, class Cubozoa, and class Anthozoa. So those will be our four classes that we take a look at. And our first one that we're going to focus on is class Scyphozoa. So some fast facts on these guys. They're known as the true jellies. That means whenever you think about a jellyfish, you're picturing a Scyphozoan in your head. So these Scyphozoans are the true jellies. They get their name because of their thick mesoglea that is part of their bell. And we refer to them as jellyfish. Scientists have been trying to change that because they're not really fish, so they actually refer to them more now as sea jellies versus jellyfish, but they're the true jellies. Whenever you think about a jellyfish, you're thinking about a Scyphozoan. All of them are marine, which means there's no freshwater organisms from this class that we would find in lakes or rivers. They're all found in the ocean. The medusa is the dominant stage, which means it's the adult form of their life cycle. And these guys spend most of their lives as a medusa versus the polyp stage. So the medusa is the dominant stage. Now this is really, really important to remember because as we go through and we look at all the other classes, they're gonna have different stages that are considered dominant and some of them are even missing a stage. So this is a key thing to note for each of the classes to see what is their dominant stage. So here with the Scyphozoans, it's going to be the Medusa as the dominant stage. The polyp form of their life cycle is a very short portion of their life cycle. So take a look at all these here. So these are our true jellies, our Scyphozoans. Look at these guys and you should be able to notice some key characteristics that stand out. So let's start by looking at the Medusa form of these guys since that is their dominant stage. So looking at the medusa, they have really big medusa. So their bells are really big. And when I say really big, some of them can be up to six and a half feet in diameter. So that is a really, really big bell on a jellyfish there. Now the bell is filled with mesoglea. Mesoglea is that jelly-like substance that fills cnidarians. These guys have a lot of mesoglea in their bells. So taking a look at some examples here, like the lion's mane, um, it's one of the biggest jellyfish out there. So we take a look, these aren't optical illusions. It's not that the jellyfish is up close and the diver is further away. This is how big these jellyfish can actually get. And these are just some examples. These are a couple examples of Scyphozoans. In fact, some of them can be really small, the size of like a, um, a thimble that you use for sewing. A key feature that stands out for these guys, again, when we look at all the classes, we want to be able to compare them, see what we can use to identify similarities and differences between them. So here on the Medusa for a Scyphozoan, we have four or more oral arms. So this is a key trait that helps us identify if a jellyfish is a Scyphozoan. So if you see oral arms, that's pretty much a dead giveaway that you're looking at a Scyphozoan. So from the manubrium hanging in the middle of the bell there, four or more oral arms hanging down, and then you'll see the tentacles as these thin strings hanging around the outside of the bell. So the tentacles are on the, the rim of the bell while the oral arms hang down from the manubrium in the middle. Now, the thing you wanna look for to see the tentacles versus the oral arms the oral arms tend to look frilly. So they have this frilly look to them, and that's a giveaway that you're looking at the oral arms. Now there's a lot of variation from species to species on how this looks, but this is a decent example that we see right here. Next, still with the medusa, is where we find the nidocytes or nidocytes, and the location of them will also, also help us identify what class we're looking at. So these guys, they have their uh, nidocytes in their epidermis and their gastrodermis. So the epidermis, that outer layer of cells that surrounds their body, they'll have nidocytes there. And they also have them in the gastrodermis, the cells that line their gastrovascular cavity here. Okay, so they have them in two places. Some species just have them in their tentacles, others have them on their bell as well. Again, it's a species by species case. A special feature that we see in Scyphozoans is Ropalium. So Ropalium are 
an olfactory organ. So what we mean by that, it's a organ used to smell. So at the edge of the bell, some of them have the ropalium, and you can see them in the little grooves here. We zoom in and we see that they look like this. So they can actually pick up the scent of certain fish that are swimming around them, and it helps them in hunting for their food. So they can actually use this to help them smell their prey. When it comes to feeding, these guys eat a ton of different things. It's a species by species case. So some eat phytoplankton, zooplankton, larva, small fish, a little bit larger fish, other jellyfish, so they actually feed on other jellyfish as well, and even crustaceans. Again, species by species case, it just depends on which one you're looking at. Here we can actually see that they can eat actually quite large fish compared to their gastrovascular cavity. So these poor fish that were stung by the nidocytes and now they are trapped inside, um, they're getting pushed into the gastrovascular cavity for digestion. Now with their life cycle, here is the explanation of their life cycle, but I'm gonna to skip to the actual image to help us understand what's going on. So as we said, the medusa is the dominant stage for these guys. So the medusa, we would consider the adult form. Medusa reproduce sexually. There's male and female medusa. Sperm and egg come together for fertilization. That fertilized egg develops into what we call a planula. So it's this peanut looking thing. It has cilia all over its body used for, for swimming around. That planula settles on a surface and then it begins to go through a series of changes to become a scyphostoma. A scyphostoma okay? The scyphostoma that we see here is basically, it's just the polyp version of these guys. So the polyp here that we see will re release baby jellyfish known as ephri. Okay? So the ephri get released and these are just baby versions of the jellyfish, so baby medusa. They're not fully developed like what you see in the adult medusa, so they still have some changing to do, but they get released into the water column, they swim around, um, and then slowly develop over time. So here's taking a look at the polyp form of these guys. Remember, this is a short part of their life cycle, and the polyps are really small. Um, so you're talking um, from centimeters, um, to, or inches, I should say, since we're in the US. So um, maybe an inch or less. Um, so these are really, really small polyps um, that release, of course, the ephri, which are the baby jellyfish. So taking a look at these guys, remember that the medusa is the dominant form. Some key features that should stand out to you are the big bells with lots of mesoglea in it, the four or more oral arms, which look really frilly compared to the tentacles, the ropalium that allow them to smell certain molecules floating in the water. Um, and then they have that unique life cycle where they actually go from medusa, sexual reproduction, polyp, and then asexual reproduction to form the medusa again. So those are our unique traits and characteristics that we see in class Skyphozoa.